Hello, in this video you will see a brief historical context related to a succinct evolution of Greek philosophy, so that you are able to understand in subsequent videos, the origins of its mythology, the different periods and each of the authors that make them up in a concrete and profound way, covering the pre-Socratic philosophy, classical Greek philosophy and culminating in Hellenistic philosophy. Greek philosophy is situated in a period of the history of philosophy approximately between the emergence of Western philosophy in the area of Ionia at the beginning of the 6th century BC, until the invasion of Macedonia by the Romans in 149 BC. Ionia is the name by which the west central coast of Anatolia was known in ancient Greek times and which also included the adjacent islands. It is a historical region. At present, the continental part belongs to Turkey, while the insular part belongs to Greece. The Kingdom of Macedonia, also known as the Macedonian Empire, was a Greek state in classical and Hellenistic antiquity, in the north of present-day Greece. This kingdom was consolidated during the 5th century BC, and experienced a major rise to power during the 4th century BC with the rule of Philip II, who made Macedonia the main power in Greece. His son Alexander the Great, Alexander III, conquered most of the known world, inaugurating the Hellenistic period of Greek history. It is also sometimes referred to as classical philosophy or ancient philosophy, although when the term classical is used it can also include Roman philosophy. Greek culture spread throughout the Balkan Peninsula, the Aegean Islands and the coasts of the Anatolian Peninsula in present-day Turkey. In historical terms it is possible to place the origin of Greek civilization in the Cretan and Mycenaean cultures. The Cretan civilization, also known as the Minoan civilization, is considered a cultural antecedent of ancient Greece. It was located on the island of Crete in southern Greece during the Bronze Age between 300 BC and 1100 BC. During its heyday, the Cretan civilization stood out for its commercial and naval power. The Mycenaean civilization developed during the Late Bronze Age between approximately 1700 BC and 1050 BC. It represents the first advanced civilization of continental Greece with its palace states, urban organization, works of art and writing system. Around 1600 BC, the Achaeans, a Greek-speaking people of Indo-European origin, broke into mainland Greece, settling in the northeastern corner of the Peloponnesian Peninsula. Achaeans is one of the collective names used to designate the Greeks as a whole in Homer's Odyssey and Iliad. In the historical period, the Achaeans were the inhabitants of Achaia. The city-states of this region formed a confederation known as the Achaean League, which was very influential during the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC. This people came to dominate the Cretans around 1200 BC. Another people of Greek origin were the Dorians, who were distinguished by their language, their society, and their historical tradition. Traditional accounts place their place of origin in the northern regions of ancient Greece, from where some unknown circumstances led them to the south of the Peloponnese region, to certain islands in the southern part of the Aegean Sea, and to the southern coast of Asia Minor. For some time their eruption was considered as an invasion that destabilized the Mycenaean states, destroying their cultural forms and replacing them with those of the invaders, in this sense it is important to emphasize that they used iron weapons and took over Greece defeating the Mycenaeans. Sparta and Corinth became the main Dorian cities. With the Dorians began a period of cultural decline known as the Dark Ages or the Dark Years. After the Dorian conquest, life throughout Greece descended to a very primitive level and remained so for several hundred years. However, from the 8th century BC to the 6th century BC, a period known as the Archaic Period, Greece developed and completed a great political, economic and cultural recovery. Such recovery was possible thanks to the organization in city-states, polis, and to the foundation of colonies on the coasts of Asia Minor and the Black Sea, in Sicily, in the south of Italy, in the south of France and in the Spanish Levant. In this sense, the influence of syncretism between the interests of the elites and the Greek religious system must be highlighted, in that the possession of the land and the inheritance fell on the firstborn male, in order to avoid the division of possessions and thus sustain the maintenance of a power based on the possession of the land, this is how the role played by the Delphi oracle can be explained, from which, through the reading of destiny by the priestesses, a migration that led to the Greek colonial expansion, and with it, an explosion of trade, the generation of new wealth, as well as the rise of a new commercial elite. The new colonies became polis politically independent from the metropolis, also called Mother Polis, but maintained close religious, economic and cultural ties. The 5th and 4th centuries BC correspond to the heyday of the great independent city-states in the Hellenic Peninsula, among which the polis of Athens and Sparta stand out. 
Sparta was located in ancient Greece, in the Peloponnese Peninsula on the banks of the Eurotas River, between the Taigito and Parnon Mountains. It was the capital of Laconia and one of the most important Greek polis, Sparta may not be considered a typical city-state, since it had neither walls nor an acropolis, nor can it be understood from an ethnic point of view, in the sense of a tribe, since its territory was occupied by five different tribes. At the beginning of this period between the 5th century BC and the 4th century BC, the Greeks united to defeat the danger posed by the might of the Persians in the so-called Medical Wars. The Medical Wars, also called the Median Wars, were a series of conflicts that occurred from 490 BC to 449 BC between the Persian Empire and the Greek city-states and consisted of three wars. In 449 BC, a peace treaty called Peace of Callias was signed, in which the two sides agreed not to attack each other again and the Persian Empire had to recognize the victory of the Greek city-states. After the victory, Athens became the hegemonic power of the League of Delos, an alliance that had been formed to defend itself against the Persians. In domestic politics the Athenians consolidated the political system known as democracy, government of the people, and in foreign policy they became the great political military power of the Hellas, which brought them a great number of enemies. This period is called the Golden Age of Athens, or Century of Pericles in honor of the ruler who brought Athens to its maximum splendor. After this brief historical overview, it is important to point out that Greek philosophy can be divided into three sub-periods, that of pre-Socratic philosophy, which goes from Thales of Miletus to Socrates and the Sophists, classical Greek philosophy with Plato and Aristotle as its greatest exponents, and the post-Aristotelian or Hellenistic period. Pre-Socratic philosophy was characterized by a variety of different proposals on how to understand the world and the place of man, questioning the traditional mythological conception of the world. The thought of these early thinkers comes to us through fragmentary writings and reports by later thinkers. With the appearance of the Sophists in the middle of the 4th century BC, man became the center of philosophical reflections. The Sophists were particularly concerned with ethical and political problems, such as the question of whether norms and values are naturally given or are established by men. At the same time, the Athenian Socrates developed and applied Maeutics, a method by which he conversed with others and led them through a series of questions to reveal the contradictions inherent in their positions. His manifestations of intellectual independence and his conduct that did not fit the circumstances, in addition to questioning the prevailing religious ritual system, led to his death sentence by the authorities on charges of impiety to the gods and corruption of youth. Because Socrates left nothing in writing, his image was determined by his disciple Plato. His works in the form of dialogues constituted a central point of Western philosophy. Starting from the Socratic question of the form what is X, understanding X as anything, such as, for example, what is virtue? What is justice? What is good? Plato created the rudiments of a doctrine of definition. He was also the author of the theory of forms, which served as the basis for the representation of a reality with two parts, the plane of objects perceptible with our senses, as opposed to the plane of the forms only accessible to the intellect through abstraction. Only the knowledge of these forms gives us a deeper understanding of the totality of reality. Aristotle, a disciple of Plato, rejected the theory of forms as an unnecessary duplicity of the world and reality. The distinction between form and matter is one of the main features of Aristotle's metaphysics. His school began to classify all reality, both nature and society, into the various fields of knowledge, to analyze and order them scientifically. In addition, Aristotle created the classical logic of the syllogism and the philosophy of science. With this, he established some of the fundamental philosophical assumptions that were decisive until modernity. In the transition from the 5th century BC to the 3rd century BC, after the death of Aristotle and the decline of the polis, the wars between the Hellenic kings to succeed Alexander the Great made life problematic and insecure. Two philosophical schools arose in Athens, in clear opposition to the Platonic Academy and the Aristotelian Lyceum, which placed individual salvation at the center of their concerns. The expansion of Greek culture, especially during Hellenism, its absorption by the Roman Empire, the subsequent relationship with Christianity and its definitive recovery in the 13th century, thanks to translators such as Averroes, as well as the interest that was professed during the Renaissance in this group of thinkers, contributed to the continued study of Greek philosophy, which became one of the pillars of Western culture. In order to give you a greater perspective that will allow you to enter the world of Greek philosophy, the next videos will take you through the different periods and each of the authors that make up Greek philosophy in a concrete and profound way, from pre-Socratic philosophy, classical Greek philosophy, to culminate in Hellenistic philosophy.
Next video, within the framework of ancient Greek philosophy and pre-philosophical thought, we will deal with the origin of man, mythology, and the Olympus. To see more videos of history, mythology, and philosophy visit my channel in the video description.